It's time to focus on seniors with Helping Seniors TV. The television show designed to make you aware of senior issues and needs, as well as to acquaint you with the resources available to help you age in place and with dignity. Now, here's your host, Joe Steckler. I'm Joe Steckler, and welcome to Helping Seniors, the television arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County. Our show is designed to provide you with information on how to develop your own aging and care plans. Our topic today is home modification, and joining me is Elaine Cook, president of Handy Pro of the Space Coast. And before I turn to Elaine, I just want to let you know that you're going to see two dogs with us today, and they're both therapy dogs. These are dogs that Elaine trains. Uh, yeah, she does train. One is this beagle is kind of active right now, but uh, <laughs> they're very good. And we've got a beautiful Rhodesian Redback sitting at my, sitting right below my feet, and the dog is very, very calm, and it's just beautiful to see. But these are, these are therapy dogs, and the little beagle here is another therapy dog. Her name is Talia. And uh, <laughs> Talia? Talia? Yes, Talia. 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 But the real focus is not the dogs, but it's the woman. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Joe. <laughs> hi, hi everybody. Listen, we, that's right. We'll just enjoy the show. The dogs are going to be fine. They're going to calm down now. And uh, but Elaine has an interesting story to tell. We, uh, we did a radio show, and we're talking about getting older how older people can live, how old people can stay in their homes longer, how we can make a home fit an old person as they grow older. And that's what you do. But I would like for our viewers to know how and why you got started this program. How did you do that, Elaine? Okay, I started in the space industry. I am a, I'm a Gator engineer. I uh, have a degree in mechanical engineering and I started over at the Space Center on the floor and worked myself up after 28 years into a program management position. And then we had the end of the space shuttle. Um, but my favorite job as program manager was industrial engineering for safety where I was working with different technologies. We were looking for new technologies that we could develop that they would be used to reduce the risk to the workforce, the flight hardware, and the public. And I did a number of different things from software to robots to ground support equipment. So when, they, when the space shuttle ended, and I did work with Embraer and Sea Ray, but then I started thinking I wanted to do something else and get out of corporate culture. And, but I really wanted to do something with the new technologies. The Handy Pro franchise is what really turned me on because it was helping people, which is what I was doing before, and also finding new technologies and new solutions. So it, every disability is not the same. And every, aid, um, every senior's home is not the same. There's always a solution. Yeah. And there's always different solutions. So we have so many different types of lifts, European wet rooms, ramps, uh, grab bars that can be really pretty that we can put in your home so that you can stay there comfortably, safely, and continue with your independence. I pick up what you said about being an engineer. I, years ago when uh, the United States wanted to put the... Uh, mid-air refueling probes on our jet aircraft. I, um, I was a midshipman to Naval Academy. This was in 1955. And uh, they brought over a, the British really developed the uh, mid-air refueling and brought over an engineer from England. And he had brought his family with him. And I met the family and the family used to, we used to go out there for dinner sometime. But this gentleman was a guy that was the lead engineer on putting those probes on the aircraft. Time moved forward. He retired. They moved to Salt Lake City. His wife became an invalid. She desperately wanted to live on the side of this mountain. So he says, fine. He built a house on the mm -hmm. side of the mountain, and he programmed the catwalks and everything to where his wife 
could drive her propelled wheelchair to every place in the house. He, he, he fixed where she could drive under the kitchen sink, she could drive under the table, she could drive under her dressing table. Uh, I'm not sure how to sol solve the bath problems, but he used his technology a different way to provide something different for people. And that's exactly what you've done. Yes. So yes, and I enjoy You talk it. more about it. You tell people, tell her, well, we're going to, I want you to know first, I, I, I still have this Ridgeback sitting down below my, down below my, my, my feet here. And just this comedy, it's a therapy dog. And here we have, Talia, you want to get up now? She's, well, we'll, we'll get her up later. She's, she's, <laughs> she's, she's very quiet now. <laughs> So my granddaughters wanted to watch the show too, you see, because they're training, started training their new dogs, and they wanted to see how Papa Joe was going to react with dogs on a TV show. Ah. <laughs> but when we got it started, I'm not quite sure how we're going to do it. While we're talking about the dogs, Elaine, how did you get the dogs involved, the therapy dogs, with your handy pro? What do you do with them? We use them a when you're trying to figure out about a solution, if you do have a disability or you're, you're starting to um, degrade a little bit because you're getting older, it, it's hard to come to that realization. It's a difficult transition. So what Handy Pro of the Space Coast offers is the service of a therapy dog so that when we talk about the solutions, they can be there and you can be hugging them and, and feeling good about the whole situation. So you end up feeling better about the situation. They seem to take the tenseness out of a situation. And the story um, I usually bring up is my, my mother-in-law was talking about, we had to talk about assisted living facilities with her. And we had a family conference and she's got dementia and she has a hard time sometimes explaining or using her words. Okay. And what happened is the Ridgeback would go over to her. She was having trouble. They were asking her what she wanted out of an assisted living facility. And the Ridgeback came over to her and she started hugging it and, and pulling on her ears. Was it and Ajax? Hugging her. It was his daughter. Okay. It was his daughter. Um, and then she started being able to speak because she couldn't form the words until she had the ridge back there. And then she started speaking. And I'm, yeah. And years and years ago, when they had first started therapy dogs, before I had kids, I had a mixed breed. I went to one of the first nursing homes in Titusville with her. And this man was sitting on the couch and she came by and he starts petting her and he starts talking to her. Well, then the woman behind me starts just crying. And I said, I'm sorry, you know, are you okay? And she said, that's my father. He has not talked. He has not spoken a word for a year, but he's having a conversation with my dog, which was just, I mean, that's just perfect. Yeah, I, that's uh, why I do it. You know, I had no idea which way this show would go when we just, when you told me you were gonna bring the dogs and I figured, it will work it out. It will work out whatever we do. But it 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 it, it kind of tugs at my heart because um, I sense you're very attached to the dogs, and I've seen what therapy dogs and and service dogs can do to older people or um, in situations there's a lot of tension and stuff. And it, it, it it's amazing what uh, animals can bring out in people. It, re it really is. When we first, when you first got here with the dogs, I wasn't sure we were going to get Talia to settle down. She was, <laughs> no, she wanted, she she wanted this plant here, I, I, <laughs> and I, I was determined she couldn't water that way. It would well, be a hard time watering the plant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it would be difficult. But let's get back to um, you as an engineer applying your uh, engineering skills to home modification. What do you do? How do you do this? Okay, we also have certifications. We're certified environmental access consultants, which means we have a certification from the National Association of Home Builders to come in to a home and look for trip and fall hazards 
and devise ideas and solutions for your home in all the in all the rooms so we'll go through with the person usually the caregiver we also do it as a team thing so it can be the caregiver the um, occupational therapist the case manager and we'll go through a home and look to see where they might need a small ramp where they might need grab bars where they might need a, a roll-in shower. Do you need a lift? Do you need, you know, is there stairs that you can't get up? Do you need to lift up the stairs or do you need a vertical, <clears throat> excuse me, a vertical power lift that can bring you up the stairs? You, you, do, you put those things like that in? Yes, we put all those things in. So I, I always wondered about the pilot when people put those things on the stairs, how do they always ensure that the underlying structure is sound enough to take that load, how do you do that? Well, we would ensure that the um, the structure is solid before but anyway, we even. Look at this going. Maybe I didn't I didn't ask the question the right way. Um, when you put a lift, it, 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 somebody sits on it and and they and they sort of crank it up the steps, right? Mm -hmm. It's a power. It's a motor. It's a motor type thing. Yes. I've always wondered how you could make sure that those things were strong enough or strongly enough attached to whatever you attach it to to take the weight. Because I watch, and so I'm amazed at how some of those things work. They're all attached to a wall, so you're working on a wall that goes up. So you work, you work, you work the with, the wall, with the wall, the structure of the wall, yes, okay. and you're attaching to that. There are a number of different models. Um, and they're coming up with new technologies all the time. I just saw, and I think it was a prism chair that actually takes the rail with it as it goes up the stairs. And then you can have a very narrow staircase and actually put one of those chairs in and not have an infringement on your narrowness of your stairs. So you can still get up and down the staircase when the chair is not being used because it will take its railing up with it and then it actually turns over to the I, side and oh gets out gosh. of the way. It's amazing that we have progressed as much as we have in a way of modifying a home. How, how expensive, and I know it's just a ballpark type thing, but what has been, how long have you been doing this now? Eight months. You have been doing it eight months? I know, yeah. And you know this months and eight months? So far, yeah. That means you must have been a pretty good engineer. <laughs> I guess I was. Yes, I would say I was. Yes. It's fine that you say it because our programs are honest programs. I don't have anybody on this show that I don't trust to do something the right way or have their heart in for doing something that needs to be done. And my own experience working with senior citizens, and now that I've become one, it's extremely important for me to get people on these television shows that can point our younger generation in the right direction to take care of their senior parents. And I think that's extremely important, Elaine. I really do. Um, so what are you seeing as, is it expensive to do this or? It can be, um, but the other thing we're also, trying to work with is a universal design theory. And I'm starting to come around to this way of thinking too. When you look at your home and you're gonna do a remodel and you don't have a disability, but okay. you have friends who have disabilities, you have, um, you have elder people that might have a disability and these disabilities could be just canes and walkers. Why not try when you're doing a remodel in that area, you're already probably going to pull out a home loan or you put it, you've been putting away money for that. Why not make it accessible also? So why not put in a few of these grab bars, the ramps, uh, maybe even a, a chair to go up the staircase if you're going to redo your staircase. Why not put that in at that point? And then you can put it in with the remodel. It doesn't become such a um, a hard thing to do, especially if something were to happen to you mm. and have you end you up ever, having an injury. Have you ever thought about talking to, or have you talked to the builders in the area and told them what you're doing? Have you done that? Not yet. 
I've only been working eight months. Let me tell you, <laughs> I know Mike Williams of Melbourne. I know the type of work that that construction company does. I think they would probably love to talk to you and get some ideas from you. Ed Fleece, Monarch Homes, he's on our board of directors. Ed has talked about how to make homes safer for senior citizens. These are the type of things. Why not? Why not introduce you to people that already build homes for seniors? Joe Primus company, his daughter's running that now. That's another good one. But there are a lot of good builders in the area that probably don't even think about the type of stuff that you're talking about right now because this is this is new and it, mm -hmm. it, it's just like we put the shuttle up in the air. Uh, this could actually be cutting edge technology. Yes, it really it could. could. So what else are you? Uh, 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 what else is Elaine, the engineer, mm -hmm. trying to bring to a home modification? I'm trying to make it pretty. I want. I don't want the place to look medical. That is one of the things when we walk into a home where somebody wants us to do the, an assessment for accessibility, they usually say, I, I don't want the, you know, the grab bars that look really medical and I don't want this place to be medical. We have so many different types of grab bars and different Grab bars types. can be very pretty. Oh yes, they can be beautiful. They can. And they can be hidden so that you wouldn't even know that they're a grab bar. Well, I have grab bars in my house, and they're polished chrome, and I'm I'm just as happy with the polished chrome as I would have been with those ceramic ones because I know they're safe, mm -hmm. I know they're strong, right? And I know the way they put them in, that if I pull on them to get up or, or lever myself, I know they're not going to fall out of there. And I think the grab bars is probably one of the most simple home modifications that senior citizens can make. Mm -hmm. it's, it, yes. it, making sure that if you, you, most people don't think about it, and, 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 and to get very personal about it, um, men going to the toilet at night and get up in the middle of the night, it, it, the, the, uh, the older you get with the release of the pressure on your bladder, it, 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 it tends to change your balance. And a lot of men, fall at night going to the toilet. Mm. This is something nobody talks about. They're afraid to talk about I'm not afraid to talk about it on this show because if I can give you ideas about right. how you can help senior citizens, then we just accomplish something. This show is an information show. You, you viewers are watching it. I hope that you're telling people, and by the way, the show that Elaine and I are doing today will be produced and will be archived on helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. You can go on there and watch this show. And at some point, we'll get the dogs up so you can see what they look like. Uh, and so, and sometimes sometimes you, you, you learn to let sleeping, sleeping dogs lie. Yeah. There's a, <laughs> a saying about that. Yes, there is. <laughs> <laughs> My grandchildren are waiting to see this, Elaine, because they didn't know how their, their Papa Joe is going to handle the duck. Well, I see Talia has decided she's going to take a nap. <laughs> and Ajax is down at my feet. He's got his, got his head turned around watching me now. So, But, uh, you know, we did the radio show. And I, 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 I'm so... I, I, I'm so much thinking about the dogs and what the dogs are. I'm, I'm forgetting some of the things I wanted to ask you about. Uh, but when you talk about uh, construction and dogs help set the stage for independent solutions, what did you mean by that? Construction and dogs? Construction and dogs help set the stage oh. for independent solutions. We, the, 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 dog, the fact that the, the dogs um, make you think about how you're going to remodel something, or what, how, what is it? What? Well, again, it's a transitional period. It's always a hard period to go through. Okay. Even when I'm just remodeling my home, I know I, even when I wanted to redo my bathroom, I had bought stuff for seven years and my husband and I were extremely scared about <laughs> just stepping in and having our master bath completely gutted and having it and we wouldn't be able to use it. So we, we were a little scared about that. But having the dogs there help you to calm down and just go, okay, 
it's okay. It's going to be okay. Everything is fine. The dog makes it just so much easier to deal with the stress. It yeah, what, like, what, you, what the real truth is, those dogs got so excited about something, you had to worry, worry, worry more about the dogs than you did about yeah, fixing the bathroom yes, at that time. Yes, but yes, This is what life is. This is what, this is what these shows are, are designed to do. But when does somebody really start, and you, yeah, I think you sort of hit, you know, when should you really start thinking about home modifications and growing older and what you should do with crab bars Raised toilets. That's something we didn't talk about in, in the show. Most people don't realize there's a great deal of difference in putting a, 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 a larger or higher stool in the bathroom. And I hate to go into bathrooms where I see those plastic seats and all those uh, chrome bars on either side oh, yeah. of the toilet. It, it, it's a mess. It makes it look you can medical. you can modify your home to where it looks nice and it's easier to take care of it and keep it cleaner yes very much very true and when should you when you're thinking about where you want to live for good so when you've when you've chosen a home like i've we've been in the same home for 24 years i would love to stay in that home so now i'm looking at it because it is it was built back in the late 70s it's got a lot, it's got a sunken living room. It's got a sunken um, pool table room. And now I'm looking at it going, how am I going to modify or what's the solution for the steps down into the sunken portions of my home? So that when I get to the point and I can't move or it becomes a real true trip hazard, how am I going to get through that? I haven't gotten there yet. I keep that, looking at it. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do. Figure that one out because that could become sunken living rooms are probably one of the greatest hazards mm -hmm. for senior citizens. When my wife and I were looking at, at a house to buy, we uh, went into a home and you had to uh, step, you went into the entranceway and you had to step down to go into another one and you step down to go into this part of the house. We, we went up to that house, we went and looked at another house and said, we're gonna go back and take a look. And by the time we got back, a lady had missed the step, mm -hmm. fallen, they had to have 911 accident there. She had broken her shoulder. And at that point, we actually took that home as a model floor plan for our house. But instead of having to step down, we had it all one, one level. Level, right. Yeah, one level. And it was, we found that was a lot smarter. I would also, as a, uh, as a modification person, what is your opinion on using larger versus smaller tiles in, in a home for a flooring? Yeah, you got the 20 inch or you got the 24 square and then you got those, those 12 foot, 12 inch ones. Well, it just, it, the only I'm thing her paws. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the only thing is the surface. Make sure the surface is slip resistant. So it doesn't really. I don't think it matters how big it is. I mean, the bigger. I, I like the bigger tile because it so looks nicer, and it's easier to put down. I think. Um, I know it makes sure you gotta make sure everything is level. That's a big deal, because if it's not, you have cracking and everything. But. Um, the biggest thing for any flooring is to make sure that it's slip resistant. What we did was we t took the tiles we liked, we set them down on the floor and put water on them and stepped on them carefully. And that helped us decide which ones we wanted. And that's a good there are a lot way to of, do There it. are a lot of sane things you can do, Elaine, when it comes to talk about home modifications. And uh, uh, what, what's truly amazed me, and when Kay told me that you had contacted her, uh, what amazed me was uh, your background. And I thought, this is a tremendous opportunity for, for a, a woman to get involved in a construction industry because predominantly it's men. And men don't often look at the home the same way a woman does. And when you get into the area of home modifications, it, to me, it's in a different world. What do you think some of your biggest challenges are going to be? <laughs> um, some of them are people taking me seriously, but I've been dealing with that for many years. I graduated from college in 1985. 
I was one of six in my graduating class, uh, one of six women in my graduating class from mechanical engineering at the University of Florida. Women were starting to become more and more engineers, but that was a little younger than me. Mm -hmm. um, then I entered the Space Center and the Space Center was very male dominated. One of the reasons I got my professional engineering license while I was at the Space Center and didn't really require it because as an aerospace um, engineer, professional engineering was not required at that time. I got it because one, I wanted to have a door in case something happened with the Space Center. Thank God <laughs> I had that. Um, the other thing was people would ask me, are you a real engineer? I got that many times. And even when I told them I had a mechanical engineering degree and a BS from the University of Florida, they still would ask me, you know, are you a real engineer? Well, once I got the PE license, now I can tell them, yes, I'm a you real are. engineer. We and got I, about a minute left. Let's okay. like Talia up so people okay. can see it. Tally, right. come on, come on. Come on, get it. Come on, come Talia. Come on, Talia. <laughs> come on, Talia. This is Tally. Talia, folks. And come on, Talia, get up where they can see come you. Come on. Good girl. <laughs> Good girl. Yeah. I don't know if there we get a go. picture of Ajax. She's on the floor, but uh, Talia is a um, there we dog. Has a beautiful beagle. I got it right. Yes, beagle. she's a beagle. She They're is both a beagle. Purebred dogs. You're a very pretty dog, and Ajax is a very handsome Rhodesian Ridgeback, and I happen to like Rhodesian Ridgebacks because I had one a long time ago. What else would you say? You got 30 seconds to say something about Handy Pro. How do you contact you? Handy Pro of the Space Coast. Uh, our number is 321-208-7989. And my name is Elaine Doremer Cook. And again, I am a professional engineer. We have the uh, Certified Environmental Access Consultant, a CAP certified, and also executive um, it's certification, home modifications. Yeah, and you have therapy dogs. Thank yes, you. Yes, and I have therapy thank dogs. You. And I want to thank you viewers for watching today's episode and helping you seniors. And Lauren and Maddie, I hope you watch Papa Joe take care of the dogs. I was able to do it. What do you think I could or not? He did a great there job. You go. Thank you, guys. <laughs> okay. Thank you for watching, folks. I'm Joe Steckler. Thank you for joining our program today. I'd like to remind you that our senior information line is available to you at 321 Four seven three seven 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 zero. There you can get help and direction that could be helpful for your specific situation or circumstances. The work of helping seniors is very important, but we can't do it alone. That is why our sponsors here in Brevard County are so important. I'd like to thank our many area sponsors, businesses, and medical providers who support the mission of helping seniors that help us carry the cost of our media efforts. If you'd like to join us either as a business partner or simply donate as an individual, we would welcome your call at 321-473-7770. You're always welcome to visit our website at www.helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Thanks so much for your help. It does make a difference. Music